This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So, having looked at everything that happened within the group statement of financial position, of which I think you'll agree there was quite a lot that went through and happened, we're now going to move through and look at the, the group or the consolidated statement of profit or loss. Now, what you should find is that if you're happy now with the SFP, then the statement of profit or loss does tend to be that little bit easier to understand. Okay. Uh, key bit that, that we still have, as before, is that we have a parent, we have a subsidiary, and the parent controls the subsidiary, so owns greater than 50% of that equity or voting share capital, isn't it? If that's the case, we are going to prepare a set of group accounts based upon the single entity, using is it control and ownership to show what the parent controls, i.e. it controls all the revenue and all the costs now in profit or loss, and also show the ownership through non-controlling interest. That being that we have control, but we don't own all of the revenue and the costs. So we need to show what portion of revenue and costs we do not own. Okay, so it's the same principles, control, ownership, single entity. Okay, and how that all pieces together. Okay, so uh, what you've got first and foremost, uh, it's like a, a big overall working of which you will need to produce bits and pieces of it in your exams with regards to your questions. So what you do is you add across 100% of P and 100% of S. The key first bit though is right there at the top. Okay. In that if you have a mid-year acquisition, you need to prorate the results of the subsidiary. So write MYA, mid-year acquisition. If you acquire the subsidiary partway through the year, remember uh, the statement of profit or loss tells you a story over a period of time, doesn't it? Okay. So what you need to do is you can only show control from the date that you bought those shares. So if you bought the shares after six months and there's six months of the year left, then you only control the revenues, control the costs for those six months. S's accounts show the full story for the 12 months, so we need to prorate them. Okay, we need to take X12, so in this instance, 6 12th. That's vitally, 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 vitally important. Okay, that you prorate the revenues and costs if there is a mid year acquisition. You don't need to do it on the statement of financial position, remember, because the statement of financial position is a, a photograph, isn't it? It's a snapshot in time. You, know, you take a picture of the assets and the liabilities, and at that time, you control all of them. It doesn't matter when they were acquired. However, it does matter when the subsidiary was acquired in profit or loss. Have I made myself clear? Yes, excellent. We shall see as you practice the questions. Uh, so again, you add across the revenue, you add across the cost of sales. Again, prorate revenue and cost of sales for the sub if it's a mid-year acquisition. We will see a little bit later on uh, the adjustments column. Uh, that whereby maybe there are some intra-company sales. So we eliminated intra-company receivables and payables on the SFP based upon the single entity concept. Again, we shall do the same with regards to revenues and costs. Uh, there's a pub there for the inventory. So remember, we went through on the SFP, adjusted the inventory line and adjusted retained earnings, didn't we? Here, we can be a bit specific about where we adjust the profit. So it will either be in a question, you will adjust the parents column or the subsidiaries column. Again, you will adjust the parents column if P is the seller. You will adjust S's column if S is the seller. Okay, so, so do just read the question very, very carefully. And I will talk about why it's in brackets a little bit later on. Okay, essentially a pup. Reduces profits. To reduce profits, you have to increase your cost. Okay, I've just answered what I'm going to tell you later on anyway. Uh, again, add across distribution, admin, finance, investment income. Again, maybe there's some form of borrowing that's done and lending between the parent and the subsidiary. So again, based upon the single entity concept, we might need to adjust is it for any intra-company interest. So again, we shall touch upon that later. A uh, key bit is that you need to take that investment income. You know, the investment income is essentially dividends received, isn't it? Now, we are consolidating the subsidiary. We're consolidating all the revenues, all the costs, and ultimately all the profit. 
And what the subsidiary may do is that from the subsidiary's profits, it may declare a dividend. If the subsidiary declares a dividend, we record in the parents' books their share of that dividend. But again, that's dividend income from the subsidiary. So similar to where we ignored the investment from the sub or the investment in the sub in the group SFP here, we're going to ignore any dividend income received from the subsidiary. Because again, you can't just create your own money, can we? Okay, and pay yourself a dividend. But likewise as well, you know, we're only interested in what goes on between the, the group and the outside world. Well, this dividend is not paid to the outside world, is it? Part of it will be, but we'll worry about that in F2. But, but our share of it doesn't go outside of the group, so we need to remove it. Plus, we're consolidating all the profits, aren't we? Okay, and if we still record our share of the dividend, then that dividend is actually coming from those profits. So it's like a bit of double counting, isn't it? Okay, if you've got the profits in there, and then from those profits comes our share of the dividend. So we recorded that. It doesn't really sound right, does it? Okay, so to prevent double counting, to show that we only want external dividend income only we need to remove the dividend that's been received from s okay again sometimes that can be given to you or alternatively you can just calculate it as p share of s's dividend okay there we go uh taxation again add it across 100 percent line by line uh that then gives you is it your group profit for the year which is all of P's profits, all of S's profits. But the key bit is that we don't own all of S's profits, do we? If that's the case, what we need to do is at the bottom, we need to go through there, don't we? And show ownership. Uh, so who owns what of those group profits? So what we do is we total up S's column. We take S's column, which is essentially S's profits for the year, isn't it? Uh, or adjusted for when we gain control by the prorating exercise. And we multiply that there by the non-controlling interest percentage, because that is what the non-controlling interest own of S's profit, isn't it? Okay. Uh, you then work out the NCI by taking that NCI percentage and multiply by S's profits for the year. The figure then that's attributable to the parent we cheat and we will always cheat is just a balancing figure essentially it's the difference between the group profit for the year and the non-controlling interest so taking that group profit for the year that we've got in the square box deducting if you like that non-controlling interest that i put in another square box will then give you the amount attributable to the parents okay it's as easy as that okay that's the fundamentals, okay? Okay, so having gone through and introduced how the group statement of profit or loss works, uh, let's go through and have a look at an example. So it says basic consolidation, but it's just, if you like, trying to introduce the concept and how it all pieces together, okay? So, so don't be put off even if you think it's quite a challenge and it's referred to as basic, okay? Uh, so what you've got there is, if you look at the requirements, it says prepare a consolidated statement of profit or loss, as we would expect. For the Vader group, so Vader must be the parent, for the year ended the 31st of December 20x5. I can't emphasise how important it is that you have to note the year end date. And the reason why here is because ignoring all the nonsense at the top up there, uh, what you've got is that on the 1st of July x5, Vader acquired 80% of the equity shares of more. So if that's the case, we own 80%. The non-controlling interest is 20%, isn't it? But the key one is the 1st of July, isn't it? Okay, that's the acquisition dates. The year end is December. So we have had control since the 1st of July. 1st of July, so all of July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay, six months. So we have had control... For six months and the reason why that is then important is because when you are looking at the subsidiary's results everything there needs to be prorated 
by 6 twelfths. If you forget to prorate it by 6 twelfths, then you may as well not bother answering the rest of the question because you'll get it all wrong. Okay. Uh, it's the group policy to measure NCI at fair value. That tends not to be relevant so much uh, within an exam question for profit or loss, but we'll see that more when we get to F2. Uh, it's obviously relevant in the SFP. Uh, it then says in number two, Maul declared a dividend. So Maul is the sub. Uh, is it there of $10,000? So that $10,000 dividend has come from S's profits and that will have them being recorded, won't it, in the investment income. Okay, but we will have recorded our share of it. Okay, so our share is at 80%. We will therefore need to remove that because if we don't, we will be double counting that figure. Okay, uh, and again, you can always identify if it is a situation whereby you have a mid-year acquisition because if the profits accrue evenly the reason why is that then you are assumed then to, to prorate them okay so what have we got uh, let's go through play around with the figures make sure that we're happy with them uh, so what you've got there uh, we're going to look is it at your group statement of profit or loss i will start off with the revenue it's a bit of overkill P and S. I'm not worried about the adjustments column just yet uh, because that's not going to be touched until the later examples. Remember, we need, is it 6 twelfths of S? So 1,280 uh, and 6 twelfths of that is that 640. So I can then work out the figure, is it for the group? Uh, is that 2? Two, eight, five. Okay. Uh, cost of sales is that there as a hundred percent of the parent at one two o five. Subsidiary nine ninety. Don't forget to take half of it. Is that four nine five? Uh, does that give me one seven hundred? Uh, that then gives me, is it a gross profit? Is that as 585? Five, five. Okay, all good so far. Next bit, bit of a pain, isn't it? Because uh, we've got so many line items to do, but let's do it. Uh, you've got your distribution costs. So is that 100 and half of 70, which is 35? So that's one, three, five. Uh, admin, 100% of the parent is 90. And half of 50 is 25, which gives me 115, isn't it? I'm not worried about profits before interest and tax and all that nonsense. Uh, so finance costs, 55. Half of 30 is 15, 70, okay. Uh, the next one is where you need to be just a little bit careful, isn't it? Uh, your investment income, because we've got 10 in the parents, haven't we? But don't forget, we need to deduct our share, 80% of S's dividend okay s's dividend is there isn't it as 10 as told in the question our share is 80 percent so we need to remove eight don't we to prevent double counting okay so when we total those up that should go through there and give us two uh if you want you could go through there and work out profit before tax again uh, i'm not too fussed at, at this point you know we're never going to have to produce a full consolidation within the exam are we you just need to know the principles 35 and 14 49 so i've taken 100 percent of p 100 percent of s but don't forget i've prorated it six twelfths for that that mid-year acquisition i then need to total everything up uh, to look is it at my group profit for the year and then i'll also work out s's profit for the year i think s's profit for the year should be is it 
56. And I just check if you add up S's column. There's no adjustment in S, so essentially it's just half of the profits of 112. Okay. Uh, if we go through that and work out the group profits, 585 less 135 less 115 less 70 plus 2. Deduct 49 gives me, is it 218? So the group profits are 218. That's showing in the control, isn't it? Because we're putting all of P and all of S. Albeit S's has been prorated because of the mid-year acquisition. What we then need to do is we then need to split those amounts into the amount attributable to. So showing ownership. So what does the parent own and what does the NCI own? Remember, the parent figure is going to be a balancing figure. The non-controlling interest is showing our 20% ownership interest in the sub. Well, I say ours, I say that should be the NCI ownership in the sub. Uh, the NCI own 20% of S's profits. Uh, S's profit to there is 56. So is that there as 11.2. Okay. Uh, to work out the amount attributable to the parent, we take the group profits for the year of 218. We deduct 11.2. And that gives me 206.8. Okay. <sighs> wow. Okay, a lot going on there. How would that get examined? Oh, there are all sorts of different ways in terms of questions that could be asked for. Uh, the, the examiner could, if you like, go through there and just ask you for some numbers on, on a line-by-line -line basis. So a common one that I would imagine would be what is group revenue or what is your group cost of sales? Because they are ones that we'll see as we go through the chapter tend to need adjustments. Okay. Uh, there's nothing stopping the examiner asking for any of the other expense categories and, and the group figure. You know, a good one would be there, wouldn't it, to work out the investment income because you have to make an adjustment there. Okay. Uh, and then the other questions can sometimes go through there. They could ask you, if you like, what is the non-controlling interest? I suppose if they were being really cruel, they could, they could ask you what the amount attributable to the parent is. But that's involving a lot of calculations, isn't it? Okay. Keep it. Forget about what the questions are going to ask you. Make sure that you understand the concepts, the core concepts that feed into the preparation of group accounts. Because if you understand those core concepts, then you're not going to go too far wrong in any exam question, no matter how difficult it may be. Okay. So that's the principles that the core concepts in the next few videos. We're going to go through there and just touch upon the adjustments. So I shall see you then.